Good morning. Uh, it's coming down to the end of uh, November, and uh, I'm Bowtie Dave. This is my personal log of the progress in the garden, and uh, sharing it with uh, YouTube, of course. Uh, please subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and uh, welcome. If you have already subscribed, welcome back. And uh, we're gonna do just a kind of a quick video tour because I want to get some things out of the way. Love that sunrise, huh? It's uh, it's early in the morning. Uh, well, I say early. It's uh, six forty maybe in the morning. So I'm talking a little softly because I have neighbors. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to give a quick rundown on uh, some of the things that we have in the garden and where they're at at the end of November. This is one of the last few days of November. As has been my habit for several months now, I've been posting um, kind of a progress of the garden each month. Sometimes I go back and um, have to refer back to my notes here and uh, I, I leave good indexes in the description so uh, I can find stuff. But uh, you are more than welcome to join along. I do want to mention one thing. So this is a jalapeno plant right here. And uh, um, the other week when I brought things in for the cold we had, but what, two, three weeks ago, um, I had brought in all the, these new uh, pepper plants and uh, I did, and I, was very careful to keep them in order so everything would go back out in the same um, location when I got done with that cold snap. Well, I didn't put this one back and uh, I forgot. Well, no, I, well, yeah, I forgot. I had it in order. I had everything in order on the wagon, um, four bags at a time, putting them out where they're supposed to. Well, when we got back from a uh, recent trip to the cabin in Arkansas over Thanksgiving, I got, I pulled up and uh, I looked here and the pepper plant, the jalapeno plant was missing. And so the first thing I did, of course, was to look around at the neighbors. <laughs> now, mind you, no one's there. No one's over there. I know they didn't do it. I, you know, I, kn I knew no one did it. So I figured someone drove in here. So first thing my brain goes to is suspicion. And uh, uh, well, <laughs> I finally decided, okay, I need to look back at my record because there were 12 pepper plants out in the side garden and uh, I, I needed to remember. So I went back to my instant pepper update that I did a few weeks ago. Sure enough, there's supposed to be 11 over there and I knew exactly which uh, jalapeno plant came out here. I recognized it immediately. So these logs are <laughs> for my sanity because yeah, I'll drive myself insane, me and my ADD brain uh so but yeah this is the the pepper plant that drove me crazy for about four days and it's beautiful but we'll get to that in a second because we got to start in order uh over here at the uh strawberry patch and oh <laughs> yeah let's just go look hi i'm bowtie dave So, as I've already stated, um, I am Bowtie Dave. I think I said that. Did I say that? This is, one, this is going to be a quick recording this morning. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yes, the wood chips are still there. Um, fortunately, I don't have very many neighbors. I don't think anyone's complained yet. So, I'll get to it when I get to it. Ugh. Sometimes you just gotta give yourself a little grace or else you drive yourself crazy. I do wanna point out, here we are, November 20 something, late November. We're in the last few days. I think it's the 29th today of November. And somewhere down in here, I saw a bloom in a coming out of a strawberry. Oh, there it is, right there. Looky there. 
there are still strawberries developing here. They're not big, they're a bit undersized, but uh, yeah, still strawberries here. Uh, this thing is thick. I'm, letting, I'm leaving some leaves in here to help uh, insulate it when it does get cold. Um, strawberries will like that. Uh, oh yeah, and, and <laughs> I'm going the wrong way here because I want to go over to, and these things are still branching out a lot and uh, I need to go in here and um, cut off these tendrils. But look at this guy up here. Is that not amazing? It's got strawberries, one there, one down here. It has buds, it has buds turning into strawberries. I just think that's amazing. So, all up here, these are all the Walmart strawberries. Across the back we have uh, the Sweetberry and the Ozark Beauty on either side. And uh, next to Mr. Turtle, we have a massive, massive pepper pump. <laughs> That would be chocolate mint plant and two jalapenos, which end of November are still producing. And I actually harvested a lot of peppers off these. Where is the, where's my camera? Oh, you know what? I have my camera on backwards here. Look at these. There's, there's uh, peppers everywhere. End of November. Yeah, that kind of just blows my mind. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a bunch in here. And we'll have a harvest here again soon. So, very exciting. Yes, I'm stepping on my bed. Um, okay, pomegranate trees. Uh, these are kind of dropping their leaves. Uh, there are, there's either one or two pomegranates on each one of these trees. One there, one up there, and then this one has a twofer, which is already getting some damage on it. Look at there. So I was gonna organza bag these but decided not to in favor of letting the birds have at it. So here we have uh, the two brown turkey figs and uh, interestingly this littler one which sprung up, remember this is the one that broke off completely at the ground and then completely regrew since I got it. Uh, the leaves are strong, mostly new leaves. I haven't figured out quite where this is going to go yet, so I don't know how to trim it. Uh, this other one is actually going right here, and I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do, but I'm pretty sure it's going to lose this bottom branch down here. I know there's one leaf, and in fact, look, there's a new leaf. Talk about resilience. There's one new leaf coming out on that fig trees are super duper resilient but this thing will go into dormancy for the winter and come back in the spring hopefully in that time we can get this planted because i want to plant it right here now let's head over to the artichoke bed so yes i called it an artichoke bed there are no artichokes in it <laughs> I am going to be starting some green globe artichokes to plant around this side. Uh, I will be harvesting those back a little bit. We're going to be expanding the bed over there here pretty soon because I need to get um, this tallest, I love this tallest um, sunchoke that we harvested in the video a few weeks ago. If you did not go back and see the uh, video series on harvesting and cooking with sunchokes, please do. Uh, very excited about having our guest with us and uh, learning about how to cook sunchokes. And uh, there's still a couple more uh, episodes planned for that series. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's at least two more, but I did find another recipe and uh, I'm wondering if I can work something in. So anyway, sunchokes still there. I do need to cut that one dead one off at the ground. You basically just cut it off at the ground. It'll grow back next year. It's a perennial. It keeps coming back. So very exciting. I'm excited about that. These lower ones, I'm probably gonna do more harvesting on those and uh, cook those, eat those, do whatever we can. Uh, another jalapeno pepper here. And even this one has 
peppers growing. Look at look down inside here. Look at that. One, two, uh, three. Um, four, there it is. Four, four peppers. A bunch of little tiny ones here and there. There's new buds. This is November, folks. End of November, and this thing is still producing. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so. Little amaryllis down here is looking green as always. Um, <laughs> we got several amaryllis around here and uh, they are all looking green. I thought they died off. One thing, looky here. See this, that, do you see how easy that fell off? These deadish, oops, you know, that one doesn't fall off as easy. What's going on there? This one here, pink. That one, not so easy. Um, I come out and knock them off. Uh, I do like the direction of this. Uh, this one bottom branch here, I probably end up removing, uh, but I do like the direction it's growing. So uh, I wanted it to kind of open up low and create more of a bush style. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not gonna let this get much higher than, well, I'm not gonna let it get any higher than the sun, these lower sun chokes, that's for sure. Or m maybe a little higher. I wanna be able to reach everything. But I like the idea of the kind of goblet in the middle, and I'm trying to work with that. Uh, the tree is not completely cooperating, but I'll take what I can get. So, crepe myrtles. Interestingly enough, look at all the leaves on this one. And this one's dropped almost all. In fact, let me come around here where you can see the sky behind it, because it looks like it still has leaves with that big tree behind it. But look, leaves. No leaves. Leaves. <laughs> I think it's hilarious how this one here, it's on the sunnier side, has just tons of leaves. Now over here, interestingly enough, this crepe myrtle is starting to drop its leaves back on this back side. So I think it has to do with the sun. Pretty sure, because we're standing under the big sycamore tree. So decorative pear, doomed maybe. Whatever that is down in the end, one of these years I'll find out. Um, the uh, pollinator bed. We're heading into Christmas and we're about to decorate out here. But uh, the uh, that's the angel trumpet. Look at these onions. Look at these onions. They are just growing. These are good for green onion type stuff. But look at, look at, there's like several bunches coming out right there in that one thing. Amazing just want to grow folks you know these things just want to grow this is a new one I may have pointed this one out in a previous but one two three uh, shoots here so these can be eaten like green onions you just chop off those tops they do make a small bulb at the bottom not very big but they give a good onion flavor uh, so we have the uh, rain lilies along there, which are looking rather weathered because it is getting cold. When the uh, tops die off, I will be just taking some shears and trimming those to the ground and let them sit. They will sit here. We do have some, some weeds in here. Now, one thing I want to point out here, I did plant a lot of seeds in here. Now, some of these, I, like I can see right there, there's a dandelion. Uh, now. That right there, hmm, that could be a zinnia. I don't know. See, I dropped a bunch of seeds in here. I see another dandelion right there. So, um, yeah, I have to be careful now in this area. I do see there's some dollar weed back up in here. Um, I'll be getting those out because I know those are not good. Well, not what I want at least. So, you know, what are weeds? Just a plant in a place you don't want it. This area up here, there is a lot of grass up in here, but I want to point out, look down in here. This thing is growing zinnias. Look, this right here, this is a zinnia. Those two are zinnias. Zinnia, zinnia, zinnia. Uh, coming over here, zinnia. Another zinnia. Uh, there's three more zinnia. Oh. <laughs> five more zinnia right there. This one actually has already come up with a flower. 
So these are naturalized. If you go back and look at my videos, you'll see where I planted out God's seed packets and broke up the little dead heads, spread them out. That's what those are from, all these. Zinnias everywhere. I'm hoping that we have some more up in this area. I do have a walkway around the back here. And yes, you know what? As with every single video tour, look. <laughs> I need to trim the hedges. <laughs> okay. So I did lay out these beds. These are the ends of the five beds. You can see the lines of bricks that are going to be stretching out that way. They're each about 16 feet long, 16 to 18 feet long. Um, this top bed, I want to do arches this way, much like the uh, um, grape arbor over here. And uh, these beds, that's a pile of uh, compost, but we'll be putting those in. In fact, that um, plumeria and that angel trumpet mark the end of those two beds. So I'm not sure that this is a good idea. Actually, I'm not sure either one of them is a good idea. Uh, this guy here though, uh, I think that's going to be its final resting place till I can start growing some more. Plumeria is beautiful. So heading over here to, well, okay, so and there is a uh, another uh, chocolate mint over here. I see something, a weed growing up in. I want to swing back around and cover this peppermint real quick over here. This is the peppermint that was sitting back up behind the sun chokes. And so it died off completely or appeared to die off. I have seen these mint plants come back from this. Mint is a resilient plant. So this is on the walkway by the sycamore tree. So let's uh, see where that comes because I have a feeling it's going to improve in come spring or unless we have some uh, ooh, I need to do some pressure washing over there that's uh, a little moss on the sidewalk that can't be safe so yeah this uh, this thing here I topped it in the effort to try to get it to grow and look it's starting to grow all over the place so I did top it and you can't even tell where I oh yeah I see right down in there Right where my finger tip is, is where I topped it. You can kind of see it behind that little leaf right there. And so when I topped it, look, two things shot up that out of the top. Plus all these other little things down here shot up. That's what happens to plants when you do things like top them. A Serrano, this is a two-year-old Serrano coming up on three. Uh, one thing I want to no want you to notice, if you, if you remember, we looked at this and it had yellowing on the leaves. Remember that? That's the older leaves. But now look at all the new growth. The new growth here a month later. What I did about a week after that last tour, I went into all these yellowing plants and I put the Espoma uh, tomato tone in here, and all the new leaf is looking a lot stronger all these new leaves and the fruit that it was developing are looking good so i think it's dropped some of its blooms which is expected especially with this weather it can only this plant can only support so many peppers so i will point out this is this uh there is a jalapeno hang on where'd it go there is one jalapeno down oh there's a broken branch look at there probably a bird sat on it Oh, you know what? I think we may have lost the the one jalapeno. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, 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 I see it. I see it. This is hilarious. Well, hilarious. Whatever. One jalapeno. <laughs> this thing is on its way out. The other jalapeno over here is... Oh, it has a new growth. The new growth is looking strong. Maybe I should... Uh, cut out that dead part and see what it does. Well, I say cut out the dead part, but look, this quote unquote dead part has something there. And right down here, excuse my wiggly camera, there's a new leaf coming out. So obviously not so dead. 
another amaryllis looking green as ever and holy basil popping out new little uh plants from the seeds it dropped there's there's about four new plants i've pulled a couple um but there's one there there's one under here new plant uh i pulled something over here because i'm trying to work it over there i want to be able to plant more asparagus here uh i think the other one it might be underneath all that green it may have died because it did, didn't get sun but this asparagus is still looking good this asparagus here is still looking good i think that's all i have left when i start the green globe artichokes i'll probably start some asparagus too to see if i can get them to grow something indoor strong enough to plant outdoor pindo pindo dates I zoom in here, you can see there's a scraggly uh, set of dates up there. I'll let the squirrels have that. Well, I'll let the squirrels have everything since the spring. And of course, grapefruits everywhere. I see some grapefruits that are turning brown. I'm going to have to come out here and thin a few things. The grape arbor okay so folks i'm learning here grape leaves are turning yellow the friend from whom i got these uh his are doing the same he says that's normal so here's a interesting experience this one looks really yellow see it's still on there really good so it's not like the fig tree where they're just falling off yet so coming around i do want to point out the um devil's backbone uh what's the other name for this this is the, the succulent that i planted over here and look at the heads it's starting to put on it's starting to put on these interesting heads i wanted to show these because these are going to do something interesting here pretty soon look at right here outside this window <laughs> little view for whoever's staying in that room yeah, oh, there's some uh, pressure washing needs to get done back there. But yeah, these things are getting big. Now, see now, this guy here, it's actually, all these are planted right in this area. They've, they've leaned over and started growing up elsewhere. So all these are starting to come out with their flower blooms. I'm really interested to see what this does. Of course, all the pomegranate trees that we planted out. The leftover peppers, they're not as many, but there are leftover peppers. Remember, remember, we planted some of these out in the extension of the pepper bed. Or those two trays of pomegranates are still sitting there. They're just waiting patiently. They still look good and green, so I'm not too worried about it. Been a very busy, 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 busy uh, couple few weeks for us. So all these pepper plants are starting to go. These jalapenos are starting to get good buds on them. Lots of buds everywhere. Peri Peri, another jalapeno back here. Um, Scotch bonnets, uh, Fatali, more Peri Peri and Scotch bonnet. Another Fatali. And of course the jalapenos are just as happy enough to keep producing. So. I mean, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least over half a dozen buds. Setsuma orange trees. I've been thinning off dying ones. I need to come out and thin off a few more. Uh, like if you look here now, this one's already showing signs here that it's gonna turn. Let's see how close it is to this one. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to waste the energy of this branch on trying to grow two fruit when it can't support but one. So I'm going to leave one over here. Now this, uh, this one here, this one is looking beautiful. In fact, I can feel the skin is starting to separate, but it's green on the bottom side. If you go back and look at the video where I explained what a zipper skin is, uh, that one had a green butt. See how close this one is to this one? 
I don't want this branch trying to support two oranges where it can only support the one. So I'm going to take off. Ooh, it tore open. I might stick that in my pocket and eat it. So, yeah, Satsuma oranges. Uh, this one's producing. Uh, that one is not. I don't know if it's because I haven't fed it. And I don't know how many years it's been since it's been well fed. Or if it's because it's in the shade of this tree, the, the grapefruit tree. I doubt that. I think it just needs to be fed. And so I've had some two good recommendations on what to do to feed. So I might try both and see which one works the best. In fact, I have two good um, suspects here. That, oh, that's a, that might be an interesting experiment. So down to, uh, oh, citronella. I've got a citronella over here. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the huh, pineapple. The pineapple has done nothing. Um, looking down in the top here, can't really see anything. So I do want to get a picture of that for my records. But uh, I'm just letting that thing go. Need to pull it away from that. Um, that jalapeno is going to overpower it, I think. But, uh, there's another citronella, another citronella. I want to kick up the citronella production this year. So last thing, blueberries. Blueberries are growing strong, looking good. And storing up energy for the new season. <laughs> so I'm very, uh, very happy about uh, what's happening over here. And there's a lot of new growth in here. Uh, I do want to go in here and um, put in, I put in the uh, acidifier. Blueberries like acidic soil. Uh, we're full sand here. And I put compost down in here, which uh, takes it away from being acidic. So I add some of the uh, uh, acidifier to it, just a few handfuls. Uh, seemed to work pretty good last year. We got 32 pounds out of these things. But uh, anyway, uh, if you're still watching, I appreciate it. Again, I'm Bowtie David. Uh, this is my um, monthly summary of the front and side beds, uh, front and side gardens of our property. We uh, moved in here a little over, a little under 13 months ago. So everything you've seen that's not trees, uh, stuff we've put in. So we're, we're developing uh, everything out here. And we have a lot to do. We're doing a lot. We're adding a lot this summer. So um, have to see where we go. Uh, be sure to follow along if you, if you want to follow the building of our gardens. Uh, it's going to take a few years. And uh, hopefully, of course, you know, uh, garden is like a web page. It's never done. You always something to do, always changing things. So um, anyway, whew, here come some leaves from the uh, sycamore tree. That sycamore tree is producing gold, garden gold, tons of it. But uh, I got to get out here with the uh, uh, leaf sucker, the, that uh, blower that has a sucker on it as well. And uh, take out, uh, clean up a bunch of these fallen leaves. Mrs. Bowtie is... Uh, making comments. So that's normally my cue. I need to get moving. She's very patient. Um, but when she's making comments on, uh, there's a lot of leaves on the yard. I know I need to get moving, but, uh, anyway, I think that's it. So, um, appreciate you following along. Uh, if you, uh, have not subscribed already, please do. Uh, get notifications on when we post new videos. I try I, for a while there. I posted a new video every day for oh my goodness a long time uh, I believe we're all caught up now uh, new software is in full production and uh, uh, We're still getting better and you know, I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy out here in the garden uh, I do some very amateur video editing and uh, that's <laughs> as uh, the sound is terrible. You know what it is what it is this is just, just remember, this is, this is my log and, uh, um, you're welcome to follow along. Uh, but, uh, it's just me out here doing what I can to keep track of what's happening in my garden. And, uh, for me, it fascinates me, uh, to see this. I have just so thoroughly enjoyed 
being able to go back and check my notes and see what I did and so forth. But uh, anyway, I've got to go. <laughs> I've got a busy, busy day today and got a, got a, got a lot to do. So um, stay tuned for the next video. We're going to talk about the outer beds uh, in the backyard. And uh, if you follow along, you might uh, uh, have seen our low tunnel over here. And uh, the low tunnel is doing good. It's greening up in there. So we've had some cool nights, not cold. Uh, I say cool nights. We are on the panhandle of Florida, Destin, Florida. And um, cold is in the 40s. So we're going to get cold tomorrow night. Uh, 47. <laughs> I know some of you people are dealing with real cold. I grew up in upstate New York, so I know what somewhat what cold is. So uh, anyway, hearing the birds chirp this morning. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. Y'all have a great day. Thank you for joining. Please subscribe. Please share. Please click thumbs up on this video um, and join us for the next one. Hopefully it'll be out here in the next uh, couple of days. We will talk at y'all later. Have a blessed day.